what age did you start off? I'm sorry, I probably started at nine years old. Um, Sunday league. <clears throat> sorry, um, Sunday league. Yeah, just playing with some mates from primary school. They were like a local team. You know, when you're young, you're like the big black boy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you go there. They yeah. stick you up top. Yeah, you've got to change yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I started off as a striker, funny enough. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, just gradually just improved. And I loved, used to, I used to love watching football. So, like when I was young, when I was younger, my footballing hero was what Thierry Henry. Yeah. Just the amount of goals he used to score. So, um, yeah, I just based my game on that. Then, um, she just going through the like going through the ranks and schools and whatnot. And um, what happened? I think. Um, Got, got a trial, got a trial at, it was, it was my first trial, I think like Watford or something like that. Under 12s as a striker, didn't get in. Um, then what happened after that, I went back to Sunday League. Yeah. Then Barnet had a little open trial thing that I went to, so I was, just, went, I was still a striker at these times, yeah, so I was yeah, like yeah. 14 years old. Then um, Barnet coach was like, whoa, 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 let's get you at the back now. <laughs> yeah. Then that's how I went from a striker. To a defender when I was 14, so that's how it started from so from 9 to 14 as a centre back, then from 14 onwards. So. so, you know, your first trial, how was that? How did you react to that knockback? So, how was that feeling? Obviously, you're quite young, yeah. But how were you feeling at that moment? It was tough, though. I remember I, I, remember I was like to my brother, I was like 12, I was like, oh, I'm not playing football again, <laughs> yeah. And it's funny now because I'm still, I still got that same, yeah, yeah, that same mentality now. But, um, he was like to me, like, listen. Look, you're clearly good enough for them to spot you in the first place. Like, don't worry. So um, after that, as I said, I went back to Sunday League. Just had that same. I was hungry because I was like, listen, I've got the appetite. I was in like in a professional environment, and I think these times are uh, what for used to train at like, Harefield Academy. Yeah. So I used to see some of the boys like they were all like proper kitted up black yeah, boots. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, nah, cool. I want this. And it look look nice. But anyway, I, I would come back from. I'd come straight from school. Yeah. I'm probably eating a meal deal on the way there. These are probably. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, in terms of the, the knockback, it just made me a bit more hungrier when I was 12. And then I remember when I was like 13 or 14, I like got invited to like an open day trial to go to Chelsea, but that was just a shambles. <laughs> it was a bit of a shambles. Like, <laughs> what um, happened there? It was just an open trial, so you yeah. just got a whole load of dudes, yeah. a whole lot of players, and that like, I just really want the same thing. So the structure and the organisation probably weren't the greatest, but again, it was a learning curve. And um, yeah, I remember they sent me a letter saying, oh, um, they weren't. They were, I won't be pro, like proceeding with the trial, and then um, again another ne- not setback. I went back to that hurt as much because I'm thinking there's so many kids. Yeah, there. that probably didn't hurt like as much to be fair. Yeah, it didn't. Not. It didn't hurt as much, but again, I was just and at the same time, I was starstruck. I'm, I'm at Chelsea training I'm in Cobham. I'm thinking, myself, bloody, like, yeah, wow, yeah, yeah. This is this is amazing, isn't it? So um, that was that. Didn't get in. Then went back to Sunday League and again, still it's that same hunger. Like, listen, it will come. Like, you're clearly good enough to be in a professional yeah. environment. So um, then got a call from like a friend's dad. Said, oh, listen, Barnet, I opened up in an academy. Do you want to come through? I said, you know what, no. Brent. So to the point where I've even called my boy and I was like, yo, gee, let's, let's go. Let's yeah, roll to yeah, it. Yeah, so he's come with me and he's he's playing as well. I'm playing and I'm... Just as a striker, I thought, you know what, this, this is. I felt like I was playing with my mates. Yeah. So, bearing in mind, there's scouts and that there. I've done my thing, got into Barnet under 14s or whatever. And that was like the first time I signed for a professional club, like schoolboy forms. And I was over the moon, like, boy, I was. Like, it was only Barnet, don't yeah, get me yeah. wrong, but like, around my area, if you, if you play for a professional club, like, you're gonna, yeah. like, yeah, you're gonna bust. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, hey, change the man, yeah. 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 Change the man, like, I don't care, yeah, bus, yeah. 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 And um, things didn't go too well there. I remember like what happened. I remember I think like the head of youth just used to question my commitment and whatnot. And at the same time, I probably did get a bit complacent with things because I remember just being one of the biggest in my age group. Yeah. Used to play above in it, so I was like sixteen, playing with the under eighteens. I get a text on a Friday yeah. from the under eighteens manager saying, "Oh, yeah, you're with the <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the big boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that was big back then because yeah. not many people like. Only a handful of people were 16 playing for the under eighteen back then, so that was a big thing. And then I remember playing Youth Cup, and again, that was a big thing. You're 16, you're yeah. still in school. They had to take me out of school to go. I think we played Dagenham Redbridge, we lost, but man, that was, man, I felt like the man, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I remember the girls in school were buzzing, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 
<laughs> so um, no, nah, that was that was good. But then yeah, I didn't get a, a scholarship like under 18s, yeah. um, YIT form. And then my cousin at the time was trying to do this agency thing, and he was speaking to um, the under 18s manager at Stevenage, and then he was new there as well. So he and he didn't really like what he had. I don't think yeah. so. He was trying to just like reshape whatever. So I've gone there for like three, four days before I knew it. I was offered um, scholarship for us and I was buzzing. I'm thinking, what? what? Like, You're paying me £80 yeah, yeah, a week yeah, to play yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, Stephen was kind of far, but um, that was a good experience, man. And, and I remember he used to always tell, to tell us, listen, your two years are going to go like that. And boy, it did. And then um, what happened there? Yeah, again, uh, had a few... Good moments at Stevenage. I remember I was 17. And I was on the got called up to the first team. I was on the bench against Bournemouth, and that that was that was a big thing yeah. back then. So massive to be yeah, fair. man. Especially as a youngster. And how was that feeling when you actually got called? Like, because obviously everyone speaks about, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, it was training with them, but actually getting called onto the bench, no mm, matter what level it is. In a yeah, it was massive. Industry. Yeah, it was, it was big, man. I remember I was, I was gas like. Yeah. Even like my old teammates are like, bro, I hate it's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, next up, yeah. the next up, innit? The next up. And you think, so, I'm like, I'm only, it's only yeah, the bench, innit? Bench, but yeah. um, again, the manager's in charge, like, his neck is on the line. Whoever, yeah. wh- whatever team he picks, innit? His neck's on the line. Yeah. Day. But um, I remember, I think we lost that game, I think. Uh, one of the senior pros got sent off and whatnot. So it was just a bit of a bad day. And I remember the manager was in a, a sort of bad time. They were losing games and whatnot. So it was a bit, it was a bit under pressure. It was me and another boy that got called up into the first team. Then um, I thought to myself, I like this, I want more of this. But um, unfortunately, he got sacked yeah. a couple of weeks later. Then um, the, old, the old manager come back in. And again, I think he, he I think he liked me a bit. Um, obviously, now I'm the centre-half, so yeah. I was a bit short for his liking. Um, so in the end, that was my whole, my sec- whole of the second year. I used to train with him a couple of times. But... Um, yeah, I didn't, didn't get a professional contract. And then, uh, yeah, it was just taking the option of non-league and working and whatnot. But um, that was another setback. But this setback probably was a bit bigger yeah. compared to the ones when I was 12 and 14. Yeah, because you, can feel it more you could really you feel it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you could really, really feel it. And this is not just, you're not just a like kid. You ain't got that, that cotton wool or that blanket of yeah. just like you're back you're in school and you know what I mean this is real life yeah. you gotta work like you're not in school anymore. you got things to pay yeah, for yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so and you're used to the money coming in week in week out yeah so like, yeah, yeah. Supporting it yeah exactly time. regardless of if it's 400 pounds a month do you know yeah. what I mean it's still something so it came to the point where I was like crap like I've got to get a job now yeah. I've got to do this and I never since obviously since then I've never gone to a professional club or tried at a professional club which is mad so just been playing non-league um, from 18 till now. I'm 23 now, so what's that, four, five, four, five years now. Um, in between then, I've just had multiple experiences um, playing in Sweden, um, playing here non-league, FA Cups, yeah. all of that stuff, and, and obviously juggling that with working and studying. And how is that, like, as you said, you're coming from under-18 football, mm. and when you go into non-league, which is obviously physical... yeah. It is loads of players there that used to play in academies, pro yeah, yeah. clubs, and there. How was that feel <clears> coming into the game? Did you feel like when I first come, oh, I've come from Stevenage, so mm-hmm. I'm gonna be top man in the team. I'm gonna be top boy. But did you realize first training session or second training session that like, hold on, this guy's come from mm-hmm. this club, he's come from this club. This guy's good enough to play high and stuff yeah. like that. To some extent, you feel that obviously, like if you don't if you never back your ability you're not going to go that far in life and that's yeah. that's wherever you go if you don't back yourself in anything you do you're not going to go that far so it was to the point where um, I remember the first club I went to what was the first club I went to I think somewhere God knows it might have been combined counties or something like that and obviously the manager has his favourites the manager has the team you like so if you get an 18 year old that's been released from whatever club because it's an every year it happens yeah everything so you're just really and truly a number if you're not outstanding you're just a number so I've um, gone there, tried to get into the team. We weren't really having it. And me being I was like, listen, I'm better than these guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, come on, these guys are some old dudes. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is head and kick it. I want to try and play, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? So um, it was a bit of a kick in the teeth. And then, and I think with the whole non-league thing, it, you just got to go, and people say all the time, you've got to go to the right club, whatever the standard it is. Yeah. Just go to a club and play games. And 
that's my advice as well to to any boys that have been released. Right, yeah. um, just go to a club, don't matter what club, and play games. You might not like it, but get that's the thing. You've got to find the right club that suits you, and you can just go and play with a smile on your face, whatever level. Um, and that was what I had to do. I had to find the right club. I was, I obviously as I said, I had the opportunity to go to, to Sweden, which I did, which was a time out. Came back and eventually I found the right club for me. So um, I'm assigned for Enfield and the manager was great at me, to be fair. And um, what was that? I come back, I was 19. I played every, near enough every game for that whole season. I thought to myself, well, I could do this. And um, yeah, I put, what I, say? I got too big for my boots, maybe a little bit. And I thought, you know what, let me try and go up again. Yeah. So I tried making another step up because I think they were playing in the Ryman Premier at the time. I just thought, let me go to like a Conference South club. And um, yeah, again, another knockback. Conference South Club was like, listen, we don't really think you're ready enough. So, but previously, obviously, having to deal with setbacks yeah. and rejections, I took it a bit easier this time. Yeah. And I was like, you know what, cool. Let me just go back to my show, polish up a few things, and then um, go back to Enfield. So, in the end, I went back to Enfield. They opened me with welcome hand, arms, yeah. to be fair. And um, yeah. Eventually done done well enough, reached the playoff semi finals and I was fortunate enough to get um off like offered something out of yeah. Conference South Club. And then uh yeah, that's what I was playing last season and um things didn't go too well this season, then I uh, found myself without a club for a bit. Yeah. And how was that mentally, psychologically for you? <sighs> Again, that was a bit of a kick in the teeth because obviously with with non league or with football in general, it can be ruthless at the they the manager or the owners, they don't really owe you much, you know what I yeah. mean? Again, you're just another number. And that's the thing with football. Um, you're just another number because there's always someone else out there in your position, <clears throat> sometimes with more experience, or um, that can for your position. So that was the case. And um, I found myself without a club for a few weeks and I was trying to get my head around things. And I was to a point where I felt really low, like so low. I was like, oh gosh, maybe should I pack it in and I'm sure a lot of boys have been in that position yeah. like at whatever level even when you're because at the time I was injured as well so um, when you're dealing with injuries as well as well as not playing football not enjoying the football you find yourself in a really really lower place and again as I said a lot of people can probably relate to that um, and it's just about I'm a man of God as well so yeah. that comes into a thing as well so that sort of helped me get back on track I was like listen alright cool let me find the right club now let me play some games and then and, and, and see what, what the future has in store for me. So I uh, recently signed for a Ryman club and I'm just yeah getting back to just enjoying myself and getting minutes under my belt and, and, and playing, yeah, man.